Hello and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Explore we're going to take a look at the Dr. Abstract site. Ah, what do you know? So let's have a look now. Here is the entranceway and this is in 3JS and Zim using Texture Active. We're starting off with a three-dimensional logo. It's the letter D, an R, and an A for Dr. Abstract. And this also works in VR. In VR you sort of stand in front of this and you're um, about the height of the R, I guess, looking up at this large logo. When we press on one of these sides, it rotates Dr. around. Dr. Abstract, that's me, uh, is a storyteller and creator of many interactive storytelling tools. Scroll through the stories by swiping or using the arrows. Pick a story by pressing the picture or swiping right. Explore the interface to play puzzles, comment, or view on social media, etc. We hope you listen to each story with sound on. Keep swiping, Dr. Abstract. And then this will, this will loop. Dr. Abstract. That's and we can pause it. And we can turn down the volume like that so that we can think. Now this is the volume for the voice. He is a storyteller and creator of storytelling tools. Um, this turns off the captions there. Uh, this will take us out to any of the social medias where we can comment on it. And this bit here makes a puzzle. Ooh, that's exciting, isn't it? Uh, let's see, bald head is probably up at the top here. You may have seen this before. I have another part of my head is here. And that one goes there. And we got almost, woohoo! And then it will chop itself up. What was neat, and we haven't done this because I'm also talking to you, is when you leave the background music and the recording, or what I'm saying on, as you do the puzzle, it takes on a kind of a different feeling. It all of a sudden starts to sound like poetry. It almost gets inside you. It's kind of neat, and um, I really like it. So I've been doing these puzzles, <laughs> listening to me. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so this is the Zim pa pages here. So I can press that, and it goes to the next page. This is the Kuzby and Chronicles story, Nenora story. Let's bring these back up again. Nenora okay. is part of the meta mystery. Probably you don't need to run uh, what I'm saying over top, but we'll leave the background music on. And this is Soup Makers, and then Detective Fast Brush. Uh, each of these, so I've just pressed to go into Detective Fast Brush, there's many episodes uh, of De Detective Fast Brush, many episodes of Nanora, Snip episodes, etc. So this will take you to those episodes, although at the moment we've just launched the first episode of each. And here is the first episode. And note that the background music changes as you go into layers, the background music changes. And I did all the background music, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and this is what it sounds like. As Aloha! We're... Finally, my first case on the Hawaiian Islands. I figured there was no need to set up shop, so I just... A. Gave people my business card. B. Put an ad in the paper. C. Made a beach umbrella with my motto. D. Use a megaphone on the beach. The answer is C. Made a beach umbrella with my motto. Aloha! Finally, my first case on the Hawaiian Islands. I figured there was no need to set up shop, so I just... Oh, you're here with me, and it's not quite a, as much fun for you, is it? Because I get, to, card. I get B, to be the one doing the puzzle on you. The paper. <laughs> C. Made a beach umbrella with my motto. I'm just kind of giving you the, the feel of D, it here. Use a megaphone on the beach. 
Isn't that nice? So as you do the this, it just keeps on repeating itself. Made um, this one happens to be a, uh, a, a an Altura story. Aloha. So a pseudo interactive storytelling case tool. on the Hawaiian Islands. Let's put that on pause. And that means it has four options, and you get to think about what option you choose, but then it tells you the option that it was chosen continues the story. And so this is the, the next one. Um, I used uh, AI for these illustrations, but it took me quite some time to do the prompting. And you can swipe, by the way, to go back. And there we are back to here. You can swipe going down here. Soup Makers was a lot of fun. That's Avid Zag. So it was really fun to kind of get these her heroes that I had put in the stories to see what they might look like. <laughs> and so this one's called Soup Makers, just to give you an idea of the, the kind of images that we're looking at. Soup Makers is about making AI um, and nanotechnology in these little uh, domes or in these domes and trying to grow life basically as soup. Cool, huh? Anyway, swiping back and here's the, oh, that's that one. Here's Nenora. So again, different uh, Moog noises. And here's, now we're getting into the episodes. And this was very abstract. This is set in a nano land. So you're a brain molecule inside this nano land. And so these were very abstract, which makes their, their puzzles uh, quite beautiful. I really, really like them. And you're just sitting here listening to the, the, the strange sort of sci-fi poetry. I'm going to turn that off here. Hit the play on it. Uh, it's here. Always enjoying free fall, you eject from the beam. Your static thrusters land you on the top edge of Hyrar. Hark, who goes there? Oh, that's a, a corner. We are a builder bot who has fallen from Salin. B. We are a builder bot who has come to be recreated. C. We are a builder bot who has come to build your deck. Or D. We are a builder bot who seeks information about its birth. Neat, huh? In the first episode. <clears throat> okay. Of so this was, a, or this is, a Zim Explorer. So we should probably <laughs> start taking a look into some code at roughly how these came together. But I can explain a little bit while we're out here looking at them. First of all, they are texture actives. So we're in 3JS. And here's the about section. And what we're doing is we're uh, bringing in a texture active panel here. And you can't see the other sides. There's nothing on the other sides, but we're it feels like there's something on each side. So if we go to the museum, here it is on the museum. If we go to the about, here it is on the about. If we go to the stories, here it is on the stories. But what we're doing is using the same texture active panel, and that's called I don't know, side or something like that, versus the top. The top is for the puzzle. So this is the puzzle one. So we have one for the puzzle. And there's one for the front. So uh, because this is also Zim overlaid on the 3D model. OK, so any of the, the panels here are interactive because that's a Zim texture active on a panel in 3JS. Okay, so that's that part. We've done explorers on the texture active side of things. Um, the other thing we've got going on in here is just traditional Zim stuff. I'm not sure if I have the T key. I guess I do. So there's the front, and then here's the, the Zim stuff there. And there's the, the other one. And as we're moving here, so this is just a Zim pages, uh, but we can also swipe, at which point we load another Zim pages object in, and we can swipe again, at which we point we load another Zim pages in. So that's three different Zim pages. One, two, three. 
but we just reuse those same three. So if we go, for instance, the down game. here to Nanora and swipe this way, then this is a, um, we're reusing this sort of second layer of the Zim pages, and now we're reusing the third layer of the Zim pages. Uh, so we'd see all that, and then we have various controls in here, and we're playing sounds, and we also mapped to our voice what we're what we're reading. If we bring this up, oh, we have to play. Nanora so. is a nano land set in a quark scope, having, having the following, following regions: regions lens, ring, 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 shell, shell, projector, projector. computer, sensors. And we can fast forward this. I like the ending. Huh? At the end of each one, there's this. <laughs> nice. On what to do. Okay, so you see how how that works. Uh, it's neat. Huh? Nanora. Um. So that's a bit of a layout of the land, and as we change or swap between them, we have to change the titles here and subtitles. And. Uh, also load in the right sounds, show the right pages, map it so that we're clicking through to the right puzzle. Okay, uh, I think what we'll do is th there's a lot of code in to, to make this. Uh, rather than go through each line, I'll kind of just throw you or show you the areas of the code. And we're almost, this explorer is really more of a, oh, we could make this in Zim, uh, this type of thing. It's a fairly large site. It took me about a month or two to populate it with content. And to, to actually make the, the this whole thing was probably a couple days. Um, uh, to then populate it with content was longer. So this Explorer is more like, oh, here, we could do a fairly big project like this. All right, let's reduce this down, though, and then peek at the code that makes it. So here it is. Hopefully you guys are doing okay. We're in an HTML page. It might be a bit small for you to see there. We're bringing in the Zim 3 module as well as Pizzazz, which helps us with some of those icons. We're also importing time data, story data, about data, museum data, and code data. So these four are the main, main sections. And we've got data for each of those as well as the timing data. And that's coming from data.js, which we've got right here. So we'll peek at that in a moment. And we don't want to, why have I brought in a test? I don't need that. <laughs> Darn. I don't know why I imported that. It was a test at some point, but it's left live. Why don't we upload that? So now that's uploaded because we don't want people in the world have all been downloading whatever that test was for no reason. <laughs> it's old. Ah, it's good we did this explore, huh? All right. Um, we're in a Zim frame. Here's our dimensions, which is basically we chose the dimensions roughly of the uh, of the, one of the sides, and we're bringing in some font and the icons for uh, the social media. We're loading all of our stuff from CloudFront, so that was handy because we have, if we open this up and look at our assets here. These these are our assets. So those are MP3s, JPEGs, more MP3s, JPEGs, MP3s. Probably about 200 megabytes of content here, something like that, I think. And so rather than loading it from Zim, we've uploaded it to Amazon, the Amazon Cloud, and it will load on their uh, CDN or their um, cloud nice and quickly without us having to pay anything pretty well, most likely, unless we go somehow strangely viral, at which point we might have to move it over to CloudFront, which is free completely. Okay, but anyway, that's uh, the content, and we're setting up 
we're preparing how to make the this guy like these rectangles how big are they and what will they be made of in 3JS I think that is where we first started so that was some information on the various letters colorings keeping track of current situations <clears throat> and making the front texture active right here so the front texture active has it's almost like an image map there's various rectangles here and a rectangle here see as I roll over this rectangle I'm getting stories if I roll over that one I'm getting code if I roll over here it's museum so basically they're rectangles that match the size of the logo that's why we needed our data early on is because these rectangles right here are using that data to make the D, to make the A. And the second part of the A, the third part of the A, where's the R? Oh, there's no interaction on the R. So the R wasn't, we didn't need to map the R, but we needed these parts right here. So we've made rectangles with labels on them. And when we mouse over them, we're adjusting the alphas of them like that, I guess. So we're doing a mouse over, mouse out, a mouse down to handle the interactivities on those. Probably could have turned it all into a button and handled the rollover differently, but then you'd have to custom position the logo uh, in a, or the word in a strange way. So we just basically manually did that. Not too bad. Neither there. The side texture active so here's the texture active for the side and um, then we have all the stuff for the side so the side is the biggest thing why don't we just sort of take an overview here so this is all the stuff for the side footers styles and different parts play buttons and CC buttons social buttons puzzle buttons and an emitter pages object for the side so that was that was all the components uh, as in these things play buttons sliders well actually I'm not sure if the sliders were in but these buttons two rectangles for told the story so this stuff this stuff and preparing for this second um, second so that one right there and the third one this one right here and this little guy for the subtitles okay so all those pieces that we just uh, went through there and then here are the pages objects themselves so this description is the situation where we've got three pages objects some of them have breadcrumbs and some of them don't and how we're planning on bringing them in or not Another issue is how do we load them? Do we pre? Uh, we don't want to preload them all because that would be a waste if people don't go in and see the stories. We've just loaded all those sounds. So basically, we didn't really preload, but what we did is once we're in, we kept them all in memory until we go out. So, in other words, if I swipe here, this one's already. That one's in memory. If I swipe here, that one's in memory, and until I do this, at which point they're all unloaded. And when we come back in again, we reload them. Uh, but, oh, I can't swipe. Uh, so can't really tell because it's pretty quick. But we may have as well, once we load this one, we may have preloaded the, the next one before we even swipe over to it. I can't remember. But anyway, that there is a, a sort of a loading plan. And this is how all of that was supposed to go. A bunch of social URLs. We kind of thought that what we would do is when we are here and want to leave a comment, this comment right here, we would press TikTok and it actually go to this one launched on TikTok. However, we are currently launching all of these as videos on all of these platforms so instagram i think we've we've launched four or five of them now so if you go to our instagram uh, shall we do it then there they are right here 
So if I press on this one, you see how it's a video or whatever they call it, a reel these days. And if we turn up the Nation, volume. A goth night in Hamilton. One of my faves to wear out in nature as well. I like well. the end. It oh, I, I floats on the I air. I was going to control it the there, but I can't, I can't actually control it. head there. on square glasses, giving it future feel. Yeah, I like that part. Isn't that neat? Okay, so there they are, and we've got a video for each of the story episodes, which are snip episodes, actually snip episodes of the episodes, etc. And we're out there uh, launching these things on social media. So the idea was that if I hit the edit, it would actually go to the post. But uh, we haven't done the post yet for, for this one, <laughs> or for most of them. And so I don't even know if I'll bother once they are done. I'm not sure if I'll retroactively come in here and allow you to link through to the specific episode. So I think we'll probably end up just leaving it. You press here and it goes to our the social media and you'd have to scroll down and find the one you want to leave a comment on if anybody wants to leave a comment on it which is uh, unlikely to tell you the truth anyway uh, it would be nice if they did um so that was those links because we'd have to come in back into the data then and put in each specific url to the posts which uh, could be possible but it's a lot of work all right, so here's our function to make pages. Make pages is slightly different than the function uh, right here, which is change details. Change details if the page was already made. So we're swiping backwards to pages that have already been made. We don't need to make pages, but we have to change the details. So we've got two sort of main functional functions. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Two functions in there. One is the make pages and the other is the change the information. As mentioned, I don't think we're going to go through all of these. Um, it's various removing crumbs and adding crumbs. Those are the breadcrumbs. Uh, playing voices and height and uh, not playing voices. Uh, toggling things and so forth. So um, all a little bit tricky to construct over the time of two days maybe roughly. Okay and we've got a go go pages. So do we talk about that go pages? That's a bit shorter. It's going to be trying to decide whether the pages already exist or not and do the right things. And in the go pages I guess probably as we're toggling Somewhere in here, we would call that update our details. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> in there somewhere. So, uh, it's like halfway through, we want to update the details, that, that kind of thing. Um, we also want to dispose pages when we're coming back to the main menu. That way, we keep our uh, we are then possibly going to another section, at which point we would want the old ones to be gone so that we could put the new ones in. So anyway, that's disposing. And then here's the the back, which is actually, I guess, yeah, it's the back, not the top. That's right. Here it seems like it's the top. Up top, if we go like this, whoop, that looks like the top. But really, it is the back because this is the front. And then the puzzle is on the very back versus on the side. And then we go, oh, sorry. Then we go to the back right here. Okay, so now we're looking at the back texture active, and that's going to hold our puzzle. And there's the close button right there. And here's the emitter for winning the puzzle. And then here's the function to make the puzzle. It's not that bad. We're dealing with the whatever picture is. Also, we have different colors for the emitter. So we're dealing with um, that. And oh, different dimensions as well for the puzzle. As in each one was custom chosen for what made sense for the picture. Some of them are quite difficult. Some of them are quite easy. 
Let's try a puzzle here. What do we got? Ooh, those are like little slender ones, and that's that's what we wanted for this one because it's got some text in it, and so this works well with uh, the text, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so um, each puzzle was custom chosen to have the right number of squares. I mean, you could probably randomize it and get away with it, but um, in some cases there's larger areas with no color at all, like say they're all black, at which point you don't want a bunch of different puzzle squares in that section because you wouldn't know which one goes where. There is a way in Zim to say it doesn't matter, so this, like if we say scrambled the letter or the word scramble, uh, that has all unique letters, doesn't it? But sometimes when we are scrambling letters, a word might have repeat letters, and so it wouldn't matter which one came first. There is a way to handle that with the scrambler, but we didn't want to bother going into, it doesn't matter, this little black square could go here or this little black square could go there. I mean, there's a way to pass in data to the scrambler that says that that's okay, but we didn't want to do that. All right. Um, so when we're complete, we are taking a copy of the picture because a chopped picture is okay. Sometimes there's slight little little lines or gaps in uh, the puzzle as you're doing it. It just depends kind of on your monitor setting, it seems, or uh, I don't know when or why. Sometimes there's a slight line in here. So if the puzzle's finished, it might not look perfect. So what we do is we overlay the original picture over top of it once you've solved it, and that gets rid of those lines. So that's putting the clone on there. And after a bit, we dispose that clone that we made. So after four seconds of sort of looking at that, uh, we're also probably doing something else like scrambling it. Yeah, so after four seconds, scramble for four, two seconds, four times. And spurting, we're spurting, but this the scrambling of the puzzle happens four seconds later, as does the dispose. And the emitter happens right away because as soon as it's complete, the emitter pops up in spurts. Some amount of spurt number. Okay. And then two back. What does that mean? Oh, that the two back. Uh, and uh, if we hit press on the logo, we're going to go to one of the sides. If we press on the icon, well, actually, if we're pressing on this, we're going to go to the sides. If we're pressing on this, we're going to go to the front. If we're pressing on one of these, we're going to go to the back. Um, or Sorry, to the sides. And so those functions are how it spins the 3D like that. So how, how that 3D spins are these guys. And they're way back, at, they're way down at the bottom. Well, actually, we're pretty close. This is a 3JS stuff. So we'll come back to the top there, but just at the bottom of the three JS down here are all of the, that's the making of the logos, two stories, from stories to about, from about to museum, from museum to code, from code, and to back. I guess, is there not a from back? Weird. Um, maybe it's just we end up going instead of a from back, we go to museum to get back to the museum from the from back. Oh no, from back. From code to back. Yeah, okay, so we don't have a from back. Anyway, that is using Zim Animate to animate the logo's rotation in Z, X, and Y, I guess. X, Y, Z, why do we do, oh, these are rotations and positions. So we might have to do a little bit of each as we do those rotations. Cool, huh? Is that in an animate? No, position the side. Oh, this positions the mesh uh, or sorry, the texture active, I guess, right on the side in the right order. This animates the whole logo, but we also have to position the texture actives on the right place. Okay, well, anyway, we got to the 3JS stuff, so let's take a look at that now. So here it is. 
And this Zim Explorer, are you excited? Isn't this cool? Ooh. Uh, so we're bringing in the three helper module and creating a three object. This is the Zim three object that helps us. We are doing VR, so we've got VR in here. And we've said XR is true. That turns on your VR. We said texture active is true. We are operating the orbit controls in a different way. If we didn't do that, so if I comment this out and we come in here, I need something, I've done something wrong. I have a red, still a red type, type somewhere by accident. Okay, that I can take out. That was good. Let's see if we're back in order. I might have accidentally typed something somewhere. Okay, so that's working. And we'll go back to the 3JS stuff. Pages. Sorry about that. There we go. And comment to those. Then we get the following. Now we can see right down the whole side, which kind of looks cool. But I didn't really want people Dr. seeing Abstract. that there's nothing That's on the other sides. Is a storyteller. And there's the top, and it's got a frame all ready to have a picture put in it. So we didn't really want people seeing that. So we. Uh, we limited the orbit controls. Um, we're using VR, and if uh, in VR, depending on the scale of things, you want to start with your view at a certain location, which is zero zero, but then things would be kind of like part way down and part way up because most things start in the middle. So if we want to lift things, so you're on the floor instead of like at, height, at mid height of the logo, you're, you want to be at the floor or whatever, then it helps to put everything in a holder, which is just like a group. It's like a container or is a group in 3JS. We just called it holder. Um, that's like a container in Zim. And then put everything from then on. So when we add or we're taking the floor and adding it to the holder. Okay, so everything is basically in the holder. There's the floor. And then we've got some XR controllers. And when XR is connected, we're setting up the movement uh, so that we can teleport, and move around, there's teleport. And we also have to adjust the scene. And there we are moving up or down the holder so that it's in the place where we want. So it's going to be different than when we first come in here, because when we first come in here, we just want it in the middle. But when we're in the VR world, we don't necessarily want it in the middle. That's why we put it all in a holder so that we can move the whole scene around easily. OK, and there are more detailed explorers out there where we talk about uh, Zim Texture Active as well as for VR. Well, that's the end of the VR extra stuff. So if we didn't want VR, basically you just delete that and delete that, and it's the same stuff. So isn't that cool? All right, uh, make a 3D abstract logo. So this is us in 3JS preparing all of our sides of our boxes with the certain geometries, uh, dimensions that we worked out earlier. So this is making the letter D and we're adding that and positioning it on the stage or positioning it in the, where we want it. And that would be in the logo. Hmm, got add mesh. Okay, so that's the D of the logo. So it looks like we have also a group for the logo itself so that we can animate the whole logo all on its own. So there's a holder for the whole VR scene, but the logo itself is, we also want to animate that using, this isn't animating the logo, that's orbit controls. 
and that's just picking up the whole scene and moving it around. But when we spin it like this, that is Dr. Um, rotating. That's me. That is rotating the whole logo. So that's why we put it all in its own container right there. Our group. And we don't really need to. Each of these letters is roughly the same. So that's all us making the 3D D thing. Possibly could have made a model of it, but we it's so it's so you know boxy that it probably would have been more work making a model than just taking our dimensions. We needed the dimensions here as well and dimensions on the side, so all worked out quite well to build that thing. Here's the texture actives where we've got stuff in the front, we've got stuff for the side, and we've got stuff for the back. Mm. With VR we need to put the one there. Okay, so this is all of our, I don't know what we made in 3JS, but this one right here is which layer are we doing the ray casting on? And if you're using VR, you've got to put a layer there because otherwise your controls will be ray cast onto and get in the way. So your VR controls will get in the way of the interactivity <laughs> in a sense. So always make sure if you're doing VR that no, as it says here, that you um, put the one there. And when you put the one there, that means any time we go and add... Hmm, if we're using make panel, it's okay. It'll figure it out. Hmm, and then we're using make panel for all of them. So anyway, that's fine. But if you were not using make panel, make panel is a, three, a Zim 3 helper module method that lets you easily put a texture active on a flat panel or a uh, flat panel being um, a plane in 3JS. So you don't even have to make the plane in 3JS because we do that in the helper module. You can also curve it though, so it doesn't have to be totally flat. In this case, we're all on flat sides, but you can also curve that, that um, panel. If you were putting the texture active on a, a rec um, uh, not a rectangle, um, a box or a sphere or a cylinder, etc then uh, it's done in a slightly different way and you would have to make sure that when you add your meshes to the texture actives, um, plural texture actives, that you would match it with the, the right layer. Okay, uh, there, are other, there are other explore videos that show how to do that. So in this case, it's pretty easy. There's the front mesh. Here's the side mesh. There's the back mesh. Wow, that's cool. So we just took all of that stuff that we made in texture active objects up above, that being all of the front here, the stories about code and museum. And that's one texture active that got put into a panel. We just positioned that panel on the front here. Here's another texture active. Dr. Abstract, mm, yeah, yeah. that's me, Yeah, yeah. is a storyteller and uh, creator of the pause. There's another texture active right there that, um, it gets moved though. So that's why when we change to different dimensions, we actually had to move that, like we had to take this panel that we have there and put the panel here. And if we move over here, we put the panel here. And move over here we put the panel there now this one's always on the back uh. <laughs> all right great and then the navigation of spinning the things and putting that mesh in the right place so that's what I was talking about right there is positioning the side at the right place if we want the stories but if we want the about then we have to position that at a slightly different place different rotations, different positions. That's how it's done in 3JS. Whatever you want, rotation around the X is this, Rotate a position around the, of the X is that, so you can't just go rot X or rotation X, rotation Y. It's um, dotted onto another property. And if we're coming in from puzzles, then there was something else that we needed to do. So yeah, a few, a few tricks because um, usually we're going to the side from the front. Usually we're going to the side from the front. 
and uh, sometimes Abstract, though we go to the side is a from the back. And so here we go of back to the side, and that causes a little bit of a like where do I go when I press that? Uh, it, was, it used to be just a toggle. Oh, if we're on the side, go back to the front. <laughs> that you know, if we're on the front, go to the side. Um, but as soon as we introduced the back, it was like, oh, okay, now we're on the side. We may not automatically go back to the front or wherever we came from. We have to, anyway. Uh, so yeah, a few extra little twists in there as we were building that out. Anything else? Um, I guess not. There's a do dispose. Yeah, just watch with all of this stuff that you don't leave sounds and pages and stuff like that hanging around. Uh, do your disposes, otherwise you'll run into memory problems. There were some tricky bits here because we wanted to play sounds. Uh, we In the preloading, uh, let's see, what was that about? I just want to try and pause all this stuff. In the preloading, we wanted to make sure the sounds were played or that were there before we played them. I can't remember. And if we exit out too quickly, we want to dispose them. But um, anyway, there were some small nuances and timers. Like we had some timeouts in there. And what we found is if people went quickly through things, then it skipped the timeout. So you have to make sure to clear timeouts, even if they're even like 50 milliseconds or something. It may still be that somebody. Um, changes pages quickly enough that you would end up getting a timeout activating a sound when you're on the next page and that means you've got this extra sound going so we had that initially we had to make sure that we went in and always cleared every timeout even if it was a very small one and that seems to have solved solved the bugs but yeah when you make larger projects like this and you've got sounds and you're you're fading in and out sounds that was another thing that we're doing Sometimes you run into um, race conditions or like where milliseconds matter sort of thing. Um, anyway, I think we covered most of that. And isn't that neat? Do you like some of the content? I hope you come in and actually pay attention to the stories. You don't have to watch me dancing and stuff, but uh, these stories are quite wonderful. And they're only the first episodes uh, broken into snippisodes. So you're welcome to come in. We have more stories as well. We've probably got ugh, about five or six more series to talk about. Like I want to tell stories about us in VR, the Pagoda Scope. I want to tell the, I have these tales from the Purple Box stories. Could possibly put those in. And I also wanted to do sort of like web stories, just like what it was like at the beginning of the internet, uh, making Dan Zen. Just realize that, you know, that's now 30 years ago, 40 years ago, something like that. Not everybody lived through it. I, you know, I lived through it. I sort of chronicled it. And that's what's here at the museum. A lot of that, anyway. If you go into the museum, this was the, the Dan Zen Museum at the time. Uh, well, actually, the, the latest museum. And so this goes in and talks, takes you through the museum. There is a formation tour so that goes all the way back into the 1990s. Um, but that's already in the museum and well chronicled in the museum. But I wouldn't mind telling some verbal stories here as Dr. Abstract and also get those into social media for the youth on, on uh, TikTok and stuff like that, just in case they were wondering. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that takes us through some of the beginnings. That was the very first Dan Zen site back in the 90s, and second site, third site, fourth site, etc., main sites, and now we're basically a museum. All right, so you can uh, listen to all of that stuff as well. Um, yeah, anyway, more stories to come in, and I want to take you through the NFTs uh, made and stuff like that. So this is sort of like supposed to be mostly the last 10 years, but also uh, bolstering the stories that were already around, but putting them in a new format. All right, I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been oh, Zim Explore. Hopefully I had fun taking a look through the latest 
thing that we've made with Zim Texture Active, and that is the Dr. Abstract site. You're welcome to come and join us at zimjs.com slash forum or forum.zimjs.com or uh, zimjs.com slash discord if you'd like to ask any questions about this or just join us and start creating with us. We'd love to have you there. Cheers. <laughs>